Hello everyone, Elite A6 here with another video and we are back. We are finally doing a boss strategy guide video and I have a doozy for you today. We have a can't fail two round strategy to kill the Dispeller of Ignorance boss very easily and you can find him here in Crab Alley. Now you might be wondering what is so important about this boss. Well, I'm about to tell you. This boss drops the Life Elegant Boots, the Songster Shoes. And I had to check it out myself and get myself a pair to just make sure before I even made this video. And it is a very easy drop to get. We're talking 10 to 15 runs and I had the boots. Maybe I was just lucky, but it definitely drops one piece of elegant gear per run guaranteed. So you've got like a 1 in probably about 24 to 27 chance depending if the shadow gear sets in here as well. But I didn't get any of that drop so I don't know. Now, if the Life Elegant Boots weren't enough to entice you to come farm this boss, there are other drops. You can get the Camp Bandit spell for life from the Ravenwood Rangers Law Pack. It's a very common drop. These spellmans are very easy to get. In these 10 to 15 runs, my life got the spell and the spellmans. And there are two more spells, which I'm just going to show you quickly now. Now, the second spell that you can get dropped is Berry Surprise, which is a storm spell. Now, as a PvE player, I'm not particularly blown away by this. But you PvP nerds in the comments, you can be sure to let me know if this spell's any good. And let's just get on to the third spell that you can get. Now for the last spell you can get dropped is the Splash Squatch spell for Myth. Now this one does interest me a little bit because if you do get it to five spell elements, listen, I'm not going to. I'm just going to be frank with you. There ain't no way I'm ever going to get that far into it. But it can do some really nice damage for a single target Myth spell if you are interested in that. Now you might be wondering what we actually have to do to defeat this boss and I'm going to go through all four characters decks and what you have to do and in what order and I'm going to give you a little demonstration at the end just so you can see what you have to do. But before we get into that I just want to give a huge shout out to MikeyChris123 in the comment sections of my Life Stitch video. Be sure to check that out if you haven't already guys. But he let me know that this boss had been changed and the drop pool had been improved. So without him, this video would not have even existed. So a big thank you to him in the comment section. I really do appreciate that. So let's just get straight into the strategy. Now, the balance has the trickiest role in this whole strategy because there's a very specific order in which you have to do things. So on round one, you want to do an Aegis Blade Storm. It's important that you do have Aegis on it. And you'll see why. I don't know if you'll see why in the footage because I think I might have used the footage where we actually make the mistake. But it's important that you use Aegis on the Blade Storm to protect the Balance Blade. Although it's not going to come off of the hitter at first, it will come off of the user of the spell. It's important to have it because when you put another blade on top, when the other person does an elemental blade, it will then protect the Blade Storm so that doesn't get taken away. On the second round, you're going to want to do this Supernova. Now, like I said, Balance has the most important role in this whole thing. It's important that you make sure it doesn't fizzle. I recommend just slapping an unstoppable or something on top of it. As well as using your hitting gear. Because for one, you're going to hit for a good couple hundred damage. And secondly, it just guarantees that you don't fizzle. Now, spots 2 and 3 have very similar roles. So I am just going to show it from the perspective of my death here. Now, I will warn you guys, this strategy does involve a mass faint hat. Now, I'm sure a lot of you do have this hat, but I did want this to be known before I go in and say anything else. But if you don't happen to have one, then I'm really sorry, because the boss doesn't actually accept faints of any kind, even if they have been indemnitied. He will still remove them through a dark pact or a sacrifice, something like that. I don't remember exactly what he does, but it will remove it. But mass faint, he will just remove it from the caster of the spell. So it's important that you have this card. And that's all you have to do if you're in slot 2 or 3. But make sure you have one person designated for this mass faint. You can pass the first round. It's very important as well. Pass the first round. Do this on the second round. Because you don't want the balance to use this mass faint by mistake when removing the, uh, the bubble on the second round. Now, for the other person in the second or third slots, all you want to bring is an Aegis and an Elemental or a Spirit Blade, depending on who your hitter is. Now, I will say it is probably worth doing this on round two rather than round one, just purely because the boss knows Earthquake and you don't really want it to be removed from the Earthquake. But other than that, you just need to pass on the first round to do this on the second, and that's about it. For the person hitting, all they're going to need is their 7 pip AoE. I know some schools don't have one, but let's just assume you're doing this with Storm or Myth or Fire. I guess Fire fire might not kill, okay? I'll be real, because we did only test this with Storm. But Storm definitely kills. Myth will definitely kill as long as you do Prism. 
So you just need your 7 pip AoE or any AoE you have that does good damage. And then you either want to carry Frenzy or a Treasure Card Berserk. Failing that, you can always just use Galvanic Field or your school's equivalent. Also guys, I just quickly want to say, if you do happen to use a Myth, I can't guarantee it's going to work. I know that just a normal Prism will not do it. The boss will probably remove it. But a Mass Prism might work. So you will have to try a Mass Prism. If you guys do happen to go the Myth route, please definitely let me know in the comments if it did work. If not, then I do apologise for even putting it in the video. Okay guys, so here is the footage. I have split it up a bit just for the convenience sake. But here's what you have to do. So I'm giving you the perspective of my wife who is just going to be the blader. On the first round, you can see this Storm is using Frenzy. We have Cole who's using Blade Storm. Now, we did actually mess up because this was the second round we actually did where I actually figured out the strategy. And he does remove the Blade Storm. And you'll see why you need to actually uh, Aegis it in a minute. The reason being is because when I put the Elemental Blade on Sabrina at the end of Storm, you'll see it does get removed. I did bring Mass Faint on my life just in case we need the extra hits. But you'll see we very much so overkill regardless of the Blade Storm being lost. So it doesn't really matter. As you can see, the balance then does the supernova on the second round. And this boss, it has to be done on the same round that you hit because this boss will shield the schools that you have hitting otherwise. But if you do it on the same round that you do remove the bubble, there is no problem. You saw the death did the mass faint. The boss removed it from the death. And the storm lord comes in. It sweeps. Boss is dead. All the minions are dead. No problems. Really easy. So, thank you very much everyone who did watch this video. Hopefully this guide did help you. I will just leave a written version down in the description if you didn't really understand this video. And if you have any questions at all, I'll be sure to reply to your comment. So thank you very much once again to everyone who watched. And until next time guys, peace.